Shalom all. We come to another of our Bible studies. This one is titled, Raised for Such a Time as This. As we discussed earlier, the title is taken from Esther chapter 4, verse 14. That earlier discussion dealt specifically with its context as used in the book of Esther episode of the Bible history. In this presentation, I wish to apply the use more widely in the Bible's history and possibly for believers today. <clears throat> Yahweh, the God of the Torah and the Bible, has a specific purpose for our world, which he created. The first part was for humans to populate the planet, as we read in Genesis chapters 1 and verse 28, where it says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Next was to live a righteous life according to his way. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 says, Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Within his way is allowance for our human sinful tendencies called repentance meaning returning to his way when we depart. Our question is, how does God achieve his plan? By force or choice through education? I say the latter, and this is identified from the beginning of the Bible with Adam and Eve in Genesis. You should all know the account. God educated them with an instruction, told them of the consequence of departing from it, and left them to choose. They chose wrongly. Enoch, Noah, and Abraham chose rightly. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. It says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Genesis chapter 26, verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. We are not told God raised them up for the purpose for which they are famous. There is no possible coincidence account as with others in the Bible. <clears throat> others, as we read in Exodus chapter 9, verse 13, and that says, and Yahweh said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus says Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Verse 16. And in, the, and in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Romans chapter 9, verse 17 says, uh, and you see this also in Romans chapter 9, verse 17. I mean. The events of Joseph and the end result with Moses, with Moses testifies they were not coincidence. You know, Joseph was thrown in the pit by his brothers, after having a dream, ends up in Egypt, and then and the, um, subsequently Moses brings the people out, out of Egypt. <clears throat> Though it was God's intention to take that group, inclusive of Moses and Aaron, to the promised land, because of their disobedience and the wrong choice, they did not get his intended result for them. Numbers 28 verse 8. God instructed Moses, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. Thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak you unto the rock. That was the instruction. Numbers 20, verse 10. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he struck the rock. Numbers 20, verse 12. 
And Yahweh spoke unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. So that is that episode. Joshua chapter 6, 5 verse 6, then goes on. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness to all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt, which were, were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of Yahweh, unto whom Yahweh swore that he would not show them the land which Yahweh swore unto their fathers that he would give us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Then verse 7, Joshua and their children, whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised. Judges chapter 2 verse 11 tells another incident that reads, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and served Baalim. And they forsook Yahweh God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked Yahweh to anger. Verse 16. Nevertheless, Yahweh raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods, bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in obeying the commandments of Yahweh, but they did not so. Judges 2.18 And when Yahweh raised them up judges, then Yahweh was with the judges and delivered them out of the hand of the enemies all the days of the judge. For he repented Yahweh because of their groaning by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Now, Balaam means lords, which Christians today call on rather than God by his name, Yahweh. And they keep saying, Lord this and Lord that. So that was a common story. As soon as God delivered them from the cause of their moaning, they made the wrong choice and turned away from his way. First, by the judges and subsequently with kings. God chose the first two kings, Saul and David. Acts chapter 30, verse 22. And when he had removed him, speaking of God, he raised up unto them David to be their king to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jess, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. After David, they chose their own way and kings. As a result, 10 tribes of them called Israel was taken out of the promised land and scattered throughout other nations by the Assyrians, who God used. Judah, the other two of the twelve tribes, did not sin as badly, and because of God's promise to his servant King David, were only exiled to Babylon by the Babylonians for 70 years. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 18 reads, Therefore Yahweh was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left at the tribe of Judah only. Also, Judah kept not the commandments of Yahweh their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. And Yahweh rejected all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, until he had cast them out of his sight. 2 Kings 17 verse 23 until Yahweh removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. Not only can God raise up humans to accomplish his plans and education, but also use existing humans or nations, as he did with Assyria and Babylon, 
who were not servers of him. It reminds me of the human saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. God used the enemy of Israel and Judah against them. God had prophesied Judah would be in exile for 70 years and then return. Jeremiah 25 verse 11. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And it shall come to pass, when the 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, says Yahweh, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolation. Jeremiah chapter 19. For thus says Yahweh, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and in causing you to return to this place. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 speaks of this same 70 year prophecy. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. An example of ungodly individuals used by God is seen in Nehemiah chapters 2 verses 1 to 6. I will use one relating to the same purpose of God found in Ezra chapter 1 verse 1. It reads, Now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia, that the word of Yahweh by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, Yahweh, God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath char charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Verse 5. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of Yahweh which is in Jerusalem. Now I would add here the house of these, the temple being rebuilt. But you see it is called a house in English or translated in English. But it had a special word in Hebrew. Now, Acts chapter 2, when it says they're all in the house when the Holy Spirit fell on them, Christians commonly think it's talking about a common human house. No, it is the same temple is being spoken of. They are not in a residential house, they're in the house of God. But Christians think it's just an ordinary house with the 120 people who are still there. No, it wasn't the same upper room with 120. They have moved from there on a different day, when the day of Pentecost had come, and they were in the temple. Okay, continuing. A few other verses showing God can raise up those for him and against and against him to fulfill his purpose are Jeremiah chapters 51, verse 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. Yahweh hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon, to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of Yahweh, the vengeance of his temple. Zechariah chapters 9 verse 13, But I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against the sons of Greece, and made thee as a sword of the mighty man. Another example of God raising up people is Isaiah chapter 45, verse 13. That reads, I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, says Yahweh of hosts. Amos chapter 2, verse 11, also as a prophecy, but the one about what God can do in raising up people 
But one of my favorites, or the favorite one I will use, is Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. Yahweh hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. However, the crucial one I wish to highlight is prophesied in Deuteronomy chapters 18, verse 18. God speaking to the congregation through Moses. I will raise them up a prophet from among their, from among their brethren, like unto thee, being Moses, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I should, shall command him. He is the same as in we read in John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1.45 speaks of this person who God raised up. Philip findeth Nathanael and says unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. After raising up Israel to be an example to the other nations, they chose not to assist in his God's plan. He raised up prophets and they killed them. The New Testament apostles, in the New Testament apostles, and many believers were taught. They were killed, such as Stephen. One such killer was Paul. Subsequently, he saw the light and was also used by God. He also was killed. Acts chapter 30, 13 verse 2 speaks of Paul's calling. It says, As they ministered to Yahweh and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, who did call Paul, but that's your name Rahul, for the work whereunto I have called them. We are told in Matthew 10, 20, 20, 28, And fear not them which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Romans chapter 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, or through Yeshua. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For well, sin is the transgression of the law. Verse 8. He that commits sin is of the devil. Acts chapter 2, verse 20, 38 tells us to repent and be baptized. This is Peter speaking. Every one of you in the name of Yeshua for the, for the remission of sins. And, or then, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So you cannot get it without the repentance. And this is confirmed in Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and verse 5, which says, Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And God hath both raised up the Lord, this time speaking of Yeshua, and will also raise up us. By his own power. Revelations 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath that has a part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Revelations 20, 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Verse 18, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? The answer, 
in verse 17, and he said unto him, Why call thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But, or however, if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. So that is the information from God's written word. From God's written word. You are to choose what to do with it in your life and life of others with whom you live and come into contact. Will you focus on self as Esther initially wanted to do or rise up by the times as these in society today, which has departed far from God's plan on individual and national levels? A lot is even by churches claiming to follow the Bible and God. Of nations once who were once and loosely claiming to be Christians and God-fearing, but are no longer. Will you assist in countering the devil's churches and his ministers of 2 Corinthians 11.14? That reads, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Or would you be as the saved by grace alone believers and those of Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 26, which says, Her priests have violated my law and have put and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed a difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profane among them. Matthew 9.33 Then say he unto his disciples, the harvest, the harvest truly is plenty, but the laborers are few. Shalom.